Hello, welcome to our O Drama channel. Today we will watch a recap movie called, The Grand Budapest Hotel, released in 2014. This is a spoiler content video, so please turn on the subtitles and let's start the story. When a young woman enters a cemetery in the Republic of Zabrauka, she notices that the area has fallen into disrepair. Passing by a bench where three men are singing a song, she approaches a memorial with several hotel keys attached to it, dedicated to a man known only as, Author. The woman places a key on the memorial and then takes out a book titled, The Grand Budapest Hotel. In the year 1985, we are introduced to the author in his home where his grandson is running around, playfully shooting his toy gun. The author then turns to address us, the audience, and starts to recount the story behind his book. In his younger years, the writer journeyed to Zabrauka, a region ravaged by war. He made his way to the once-famed Grand Budapest Hotel, which now seemed to have only a few guests besides himself and some unnamed individuals. One day, as the author conversed with concierge Jean, they noticed a solitary elderly man in the lobby, appearing sad and lonesome. Curious, the author inquired about the man's identity, and Jean revealed him to be Zero Mustafa, the hotel's proprietor. Although Mr. Mustafa was known for owning numerous luxurious accommodations worldwide, Jean astonished the author by mentioning that, at the Grand Budapest, he resided in modest servant quarters. Their discussion was abruptly halted when a man in the lobby started choking. As Jean hastened to his aid, the author retreated to his room using the elevator. As time passed, the author's intrigue about Mustafa persisted, eventually leading to a chance encounter in the hotel's bathhouse. Mustafa invited the author to join him for dinner that evening, and when they reconvened, Zero commenced recounting a tale. Part 1, Monsieur Gustave. Zero's tale begins during his adolescent years. We first witness young Zero attending to the needs of the Grand Budapest Hotel staff under the supervision of the famed concierge, Monsieur Gustave H. They are preparing a meal for Gustave and an elderly woman called Madame D. At dinner, the old lady expresses her fear of leaving the hotel, worried she may never see Gustav again. Gustav reassures her that her concerns are unfounded. Before her departure, she asks Gustav to light a candle for her, and they exchange, I love you, before she is driven home. It is at this point that Zero is formally introduced to Gustav. Initially intending to have Zero light the candle as Madame D requested, Gustav soon inquires about the young man's employment status, learning that he is on a trial basis. Gustav conducts an impromptu interview with Zero. Despite Zero's initial explanations, Gustav deduces that the boy lacks hotel experience, education, and family connections. When asked why he aspires to be a lobby boy, Zero replies, who wouldn't at the Grand Budapest Hotel? Gustav is impressed with this response. Zero asks if Gustav was ever a lobby boy, to which Gustav enigmatically replies, what do you think? With Gustav as his mentor, Zero works swiftly and efficiently, ensuring that every guest is fully satisfied with their stay, attentively absorbing Gustav's advice. As for the Grand Budapest's ownership, the hotel owner's identity remains a secret, but it is widely known that an emissary, Deputy Kovacs, is sent to oversee operations. Zero also discovers that many of the hotel's most esteemed guests frequent the establishment because of Gustav, who is known to have liaisons with numerous elderly blonde women seeking attention and reassurance. During this period, Zero encounters his true love, Agatha, a baker with a unique birthmark on her cheek who works at Mendel's, Gustav's preferred pastry shop. However, the elder Zero only briefly mentions her before continuing with his narrative, focusing on other aspects of the story. Part 2, Madame Kvdut. One morning, as Zero collects newspapers, he spots a headline that grabs his attention. He hurries back to the hotel to inform Gustav that Madame D has been discovered dead in her bathroom. Stunned, Gustav immediately takes Zero on a train journey to Madame D's estate. During the train ride, they stop near a barley field on a day known as the closing of the frontier. Gustav and Zero observe soldiers stationed in the field. A group of soldiers boards the train and demands identification from both men. Gustav presents his documents, but Zero, an immigrant, has none. The lead soldier orders Zero to accompany him, but Gustav intervenes, defending Zero and engaging in a scuffle with the soldiers. Pinned against the wall, 
Gustav shouts, take your hands off my lobby boy. The commotion attracts Inspector Henkels, who enters the car and recognizes Gustav. Upon hearing Henkels' parents' names, Gustav recalls them and Henkels' childhood nickname, Little Albert. Henkels grants Zero a pardon for the trip, but advises him to obtain official documents immediately. Upon arriving at Madame D's mansion, her maid Clotilde escorts Gustav and Zero to the deceased's body, lying in a casket. Gustav speaks to her as if she were alive, offering praise. Eventually, Clotilde informs Gustav that the butler, M. Serge X, seeks to speak with him. However, a distraught Serge hurriedly departs, prompting Gustav and Zero to give chase. They end up in the estate's trophy room, where several of Madame D's relatives have gathered for the reading of her will. Gustav and Zero are surprised to see Mr. Kovacs, the executor of the estate and the one responsible for analyzing the will and its numerous amendments. Notable among the heirs are Madame D's son Dimitri and his three sisters Marguerite, Letizia, and Carolina. While small provisions are made for other family members, Kovacs announces a recent amendment, which is under investigation. It expresses gratitude for Gustav's kindness and grants him ownership of a valued painting called, Boy with Apple. Dimitri confronts Gustav furiously, using homophobic slurs and refusing to hand over the painting. A verbal altercation escalates into a physical scuffle between Dimitri, Gustav, Zero, and Dimitri's right-hand man, J.G. Jopling. Gustav then takes Zero to the room where, Boy with Apple, hangs. After admiring it briefly, they remove it and replace it with a crude painting. Gustav asks Serge to wrap Boy with Apple. Unnoticed by others, Serge slips a confidential envelope into the back of the painting before wrapping it in brown paper and handing it to Gustav. Gustav recalls that Serge had intended to speak to him earlier but receives no further information. On their return journey, Gustav decides to cherish Madame D's gift but realizes that Dimitri may come looking for the painting. He suggests to Zero that they sell, Boy with Apple, on the black market, offering Zero 1.5% of the profits and naming him as his heir in exchange for his assistance. Zero agrees and quickly documents Gustav's declaration to make it official. Back at the hotel, they hide, Boy with Apple, in the vault, just before Henkels arrives to arrest Gustav as the prime suspect in Madame D's murder. As Zero watches, Gustav attempts to flee, but Henkels and his men give chase. Part 3, Checkpoint 19, Criminal Internment Camp A week before his trial, Gustav finds himself behind bars. When Zero visits, he is shocked to see Gustav injured, but Gustav explains that he had to assert himself when other inmates questioned his masculinity. Zero learns from Mr. Kovacs that several of Madame D's family members provided a deposition accusing Gustav of secretly entering the mansion and poisoning Madame D with strychnine. However, the key witness, Serge X, has vanished. Gustav suspects that Madame's family coerced Serge into bearing false witness, and although Gustav has an alibi, he is hesitant to involve the Duchess of Westphalia, as it would tarnish her reputation. Meanwhile, Dimitri secretly begins his search for Serge, sending his henchman Jopling to question Serge's sister, who claims to have no knowledge of her brother's whereabouts. Soon, Zero acts as an intermediary for Gustav's correspondence with the Grand Budapest staff, reading them Gustav's letters and poetry. Gustav also requests that any issues be addressed to Zero in his absence. In prison, Gustav becomes a concierge-like figure to the inmates, serving them cheerfully. He shares Mendel's pastries with several inmates, Pinky, Wolf, Gunther, and Ludwig, who appreciate Gustav's kindness and offer to help him escape. Limited in tools for the escape, Gustav devises a clever plan using Mendel's pastry boxes. At this point, Old Zero becomes emotional, as talking about Agatha affects him deeply. Returning to the story, Zero and Agatha collaborate to smuggle tools hidden within pastries to Gustav, deceiving the prison guards and providing Gustav and his comrades the means to attempt their escape. Regarding Madame D's will, Kovacs suspects that something is amiss with the paperwork and, along with Serge's disappearance, urges Dimitri and his sisters to involve local authorities, which Dimitri adamantly refuses. Dimitri insists on getting what he believes is his due, while Kovacs insists on following his late client's instructions and acting honorably. Their disagreement culminates in Dimitri storming out and Joplin killing Kovacs' cat by throwing it out a window. 
Later, Joplin murders Kovacs, who had been trying to evade him. As Gustav's escape draws near, Zero informs Agatha about the boy with Apple and, fearing they might be caught, entrusts her with the information needed to retrieve it from the hotel vault. At the prison, Gustav and his fellow inmates initiate their escape plan. Despite encountering obstacles, such as nosy prisoners and guards playing poker, the group manages to escape, with Gunther sacrificing himself in the process. Outside the prison, Zero awaits Gustav, and they part ways with Ludwig, Pinky, and Wolf, who hijack a nearby bus. Gustav becomes frustrated with Zero for not preparing a safe house, spare clothes, or his favorite cologne and lashes out, criticizing Zero's culture. However, Zero rebukes Gustav by recounting his tragic past, prompting Gustav to apologize sincerely before they flee the prison together. Following the escape, Henkels and his team investigate the breakout, encountering Joplin among them. Henkels informs Joplin about the recent discovery of Madame D's lawyer's body. Joplin admits to knowing Mr. Kovacs was missing but denies knowledge of his death before leaving the prison. After journeying through the snow-covered countryside, Gustav and Zero find a phone booth, and Gustav contacts a network of hotel concierges. Part 4, The Society of the Crossed Keys. Gustav's plea for help reaches concierges M, Ivan M, Martin M, Robin M, George, and M, Dino. Eventually, M. Ivan rescues Gustav and Zero from the wilderness. The concierges learn that Serge has taken refuge in the Gablemeister's Peak Mountain Range and secured train tickets and Gustav's favorite cologne for the duo. With Mr. Kovacs dead, Dimitri tries to decipher his mother's remaining will. Around this time, Dimitri notices the absence of Boy with Apple from the mansion study. Clotilda, the maid, confirms Gustav removed the painting. Agatha decides to retrieve Boy with Apple using Zero's information but becomes nervous when she hears footsteps approaching her room. Later, Serge's sister is found decapitated, her severed head in a laundry basket, presumably the work of Joplin. A nearby discarded telegram envelope with its contents missing is also discovered. Henkels and his soldiers find the telegram's information at the post office, directing Serge's sister to meet him near Gablemeister's Peak. Gustav and Zero try to rendezvous with Serge at an observatory near the summit, but monks direct them to a monastery higher in the hills. Inside the monastery's confessional, Serge tells Gustav and Zero about his sister's death and witnessing the creation of a second will Madame D made in case of her murder. Serge reveals that Dimitri and his family destroyed the original but claims to have obtained a copy. However, before he can disclose its location, Serge falls silent. Gustav and Zero discover Serge has been strangled, and they see Joplin leaving through a side door. They chase Joplin down the hills, with Joplin skiing and Gustav and Zero sledding. The pursuit ends with Joplin veering off course while the sled crashes into a hill, sending Zero into the snow and Gustav clinging to the edge. As Joplin tries to loosen the icy ledge Gustav hangs from, Zero pushes the crazed murderer over the edge to his death. However, their triumph is short-lived as Henkel appears, ordering them not to move. Gustav and Zero then steal Joplin's motorcycle as Henkel's troops open fire. Part 5, The Duplicate of the Second Will. As the war engulfs the Grand Budapest Hotel, the military occupies many rooms, and M. Chuck takes over concierge duties in Gustav and Zero's absence. To retrieve Boy with Apple, Gustav and Zero have Agatha enter the hotel disguised as a Mendel's pastry delivery person. While they keep watch at the entrance, Dimitri and his sisters arrive. Dimitri spots Agatha, who tries to flee. They end up in an elevator, where Dimitri glimpses a portion of the painting through torn packaging. On the sixth floor, Dimitri pursues Agatha. Worried for her safety, Gustav and Zero infiltrate the hotel, disguised as Mendel's staff, only to face Dimitri. Dimitri attempts to kill Gustav, sparking a shootout with soldiers on multiple floors. Henkel intervenes, demanding everyone stop shooting. However, Agatha's cry for help breaks the silence. Zero sees her hanging from the edge of a third-floor suite, the painting nearby. Desperate to save her, Zero inadvertently falls off the edge with her, and they both crash through the roof of the Mendel's pastry wagon below. 
After Boy with Apple is recovered, the hidden documents search concealed on the back are discovered in the presence of Gustav, Dimitri, Zero, Agatha, hotel staff, and armed forces. Henkels reads the second will, which not only exonerates Gustav of Madame D's murder but also bequeaths him various businesses she owned, including the Grand Budapest Hotel. As Old Zero continues the story, he notes that Gustav adopted the mannerisms of the elderly women he used to entertain. With his newfound wealth and freedom, Gustav promotes Zero to concierge of the hotel. A brief scene shows Gustav officiating Zero and Agatha's wedding. However, Zero reveals that Agatha and their first child later died from a deadly disease. The narrative shifts to Gustav, Zero, and Agatha on a train, where Gustav finally addresses Zero's earlier question about whether he was ever a lobby boy. Gustav admits he was, but acknowledges that Zero was far superior in the role. During the journey, the train halts in the same barley field as before, and several soldiers board to check papers. While Gustav and Agatha's documents are accepted, Zero's pass is not. Gustav tries to use the pass Henkel previously provided, but the soldier rips it up, explaining that it's worthless due to the altered wartime conditions and the disappearance of the country on the pass. Despite Gustav's threats, the soldier knocks Zero unconscious with his gun, provoking Gustav to attack him. As Old Zero finishes his story, the author asks about Gustav's fate. Old Zero reveals that the soldiers executed Gustav, and he inherited all of Gustav's possessions. After their meal and conversation, they head to the front desk, where the concierge is absent. Zero retrieves the keys to their rooms, one of which is labeled M. Gustav Suite. Waiting for the elevator, the author questions if Zero kept the hotel to preserve a piece of Gustav's world. Zero responds that he maintained the hotel as a tribute to Agatha and the best years of his life, believing that Gustav's world had vanished before his employment at the hotel. They part ways, and the author mentions his subsequent South American travels and his decision never to return to the hotel, which he describes as magnificent ruins. The film concludes with a shot of a young woman finishing the author's book in the cemetery.